Joining me now, Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House and Fox News contributor. He's the author of Trump and the American Future. It's always great to speak to you, Speaker Gingrich, someone I consider a mentor and who, as you can see, I've been following around since I was 13 years old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Do you remember I that? I don't think I'd ever seen that before. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um, I want to talk to you about this goal that we have in this country of getting back to doing great things. And as you know, I feel like this is something that really ought to unite us. It ought to bring us together. It ought to inspire us each as Americans. What can we do to get back to that point? Well, you know, one of the greatnesses of the American system is that government is in the end not at the center of our being. We're not the Soviet Union. We're not communist China. We're not uh, Cuba. <clears throat> we are, despite every effort of the left, we are still a free people. And you can see that in space. Mm -hmm. uh, the greatest breakthroughs in space right now are coming from two or three entrepreneurs. And they're just doing it. In fact, unless the Biden administration finds a way to uh, cripple them, uh, they're almost certainly going to take us to the moon, and they're almost certainly going to take us to Mars, uh, and you, you're going to find your family having the option, I think, uh, by the time uh, that they are 20, 25 years old, to be able to consider seriously uh, going to Mars. Mm -hmm. Now, th these are not small things, and it's taken, uh, it's ironic for people who uh, sometimes complain about immigration. Elon Musk is one of the great contributors to America's future. Uh, and he does it because it, it fills his ego needs. Uh, he, he didn't fill out a form for the government. Uh, the government has funded some of his projects. But he's undertaken things nobody thought possible. Uh, I also think that we have to look at, uh, you know, if, if you wanted a really great goal for America, it would be to decide that every American was truly going to have the ability to pursue happiness. And that would require overhauling the schools. It would require providing physical safety in our biggest cities. It would require changing the tax law to make it very easy to run a small business. But if we took it seriously, rolled up our sleeves, my guess is within a decade, uh, we would be a dramatically different country than we are right now. Speaker, I, I feel like we need to be on more of a Cold War footing when it comes to our relationship with China. <clears throat> they have undertaken a war against us in terms of sending fentanyl over that has killed so many Americans. We see their support in Alaska of the type of, of race-based politics that are designed to split us apart internally. What can we do to achieve more of a Cold War mindset about our relationship with China in a time when so many people seem to be compromised by it at the highest levels of, of corporate America and of government? Well, we're right now exactly where we were between 1945 and 19... ...out of World War II. We didn't want to have a Cold War. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't want to have the Soviet Union as an adversary. But they gave us no choice. And over time, we gradually toughened up. We gradually created institutions to contain them. Now, I'll give you a very simple example. Uh, a bill has been introduced to allow people to sue China over COVID. But of course, everyone knows even if you won the lawsuit, they wouldn't pay anything. We should establish a 30 percent tariff on all Chinese goods so that we could build a trust fund and pay off the d enormous debt that China owes the United States. And I'd recommend every country in the world impose a 30 percent tariff, because the truth is uh, the Chinese caused what was the Chinese virus. Trump was right. Uh, all this political correctness is nonsense. The Chinese lied to and manipulated the World Health Organization. The Chinese bear the responsibility for allowing this virus to get out of control. And <clears throat> They, say they have to be real things. This is not about words. Mm -hmm. When we were faced with the Soviet Union, we built the Strategic Air Command, the Central Intelligence Agency. We created the modern Air Force. We created NATO to protect Europe, uh, CETO to protect Southeast Asia. Uh, we were deeply engaged in real things. And Xi Jinping's not stupid. <laughs> Until we do real things that have a real impact, He's just going to think it's just a bunch of politicians over here prattling, and he'll figure that he, he, he can influence most of them and own a few of them. Mm -hmm. I, I think, uh, Mr. Speaker, that we have a situation now where, unfortunately, our 
we have so many politicians who are asleep at the wheel on this uh, and are not paying attention to how important it is for the future of the country. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.